Hey folks, and welcome to the four poster bed. I'm getting up in a minute to build a tent. Do you know what? I've learned an awful lot this week about recording for just plain old book reading. You'd think it was easy. You would think, well, I can read, but it's not. It's really hard. When you start recording... It's got to be audiobook standard. And it, well, if you're recording for an audiobook, I mean, I mean, if you're recording on your phone for YouTube or something, that's absolutely fine. And I, I haven't quite figured out why that's fine. But the minute I start doing it professionally, as it were, nothing works, nothing's fine. It's just not good enough. And the more I listen, the more mistakes I sort of discover. Anyway, my biggest mistake of the week, the entire week, was having the recording level up too high. That much I have now gleaned. And it's funny because the reason I have it high is because when I'm recording a podcast, if I don't have the volumes up high enough, because I don't post-edit, I just upload directly from the recording app on Spreaker. And my voice is always quieter than the adverts, and I hate that. So I'd always up the volume a bit, and then, of course, you get background noise, etc., etc. So my whole system is set up for podcasting, and therein lay a problem for me. So I spent a week trying to record this book. Um, it's only 2,000 words. Last night I was thinking, should I just cut it in half? Should I just do a 1,000 words? But then I've got to do half a, a graphic novel, and the whole... You know, I I want to do a strata per episode. This is my sci-fi love story adventure book, right, the series, which is really being held up by several things. So that's the first hold up. Now, I was also investigating, there were a lot of people giving a, a lot of really, really good advice on YouTube for how to record your own audio book. I can't remember the names. I looked at three or four yesterday and they've all got really good tips. Now, one guy who's a, um, an engineer, come along then, there's a cat, who's an engineer, um, was saying, and I know this because I've, I've created a, a recording booth in a um, tanning tent before. I think the video is still up on YouTube. But it was so big, I lined it with foam, and it was so big and cumbersome, and it was too difficult to take, you know, to put up and down that I just, I think I sold all the foam and just threw the tent away. Um, And because I record my voice with so many plugins, because it's all processed, because I can't sing, and I turn myself into other voices, um, you know, and it's all sampled, I don't, it doesn't really matter where it comes from. You can can record that on a phone. If you're going to take it into Logic Pro and you're going to play around with it, you know, remembering that Tale Teller Club is the keys in the title. It's about telling stories much more than about, you know, the narrative is prime, shall we say. The narrative is prime. And also when you're doing film music, I think it's a bit of a difference as well. Completely different to doing, to, to recital, to actually having a really clean, lovely recording where no one can hear your mouth movements, your spit sounds... And no one can hear your popping. So, massive problem. And now I'm just thinking, oh, well, does that mean my 4,000 podcasts are rubbish? Nobody's ever said anything. But, you know, who you, you I don't engage with an audience. That's the thing about podcasting. You just sort of put it out there and it's off with the RSS feed. You don't get any information from that. You don't know who's listening. Um, I mean, there are ways of doing it. You can go and do an Apple analytics thing and stuff like that. But I never do. I never do because the podcast is just, uh, you know, the life of a musician. Here's how it goes. Da, 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 da. Um, so, yeah, this guy who's a sound engineer who, you know, I, they are gods, these people. They're usually men. Men like tech and I think they're drawn to it. And they're not afraid of knobs. Uh, that's always the case. I think women look, you know, if you, if you, oh, off he goes. If you look, if you walk into a recording studio and there's hundreds of buttons and knobs and flashy bits, I mean, I always get very excited, but I wouldn't have the confidence to use it. Do you see what I mean? Whereas a man would just get in amongst it. 
he wouldn't be phased by it. He'd just say, oh, can I have a go? And, you know, we need to steal that skill, um, that bravery. We need that as women. We really do. Um, anyway, he said, and I can't believe I'd forgotten this after the tent building. He said, if you, you, you need reverb free environment. Now, my recording studio has so much bloody reverb in it. Because it's not soundproofed. I haven't soundproofed it. Because when I play live cello, it sounds better. <laughs> so I really like the acoustics. Well, that's a bugger to to um, record, for, especially for a narrative, a vocal narrative. You don't want all that reverb. Um, I mean, I always add loads of reverb if it's needed, but it, I don't really need that much because it's already in the room. Well, of course, what that means is that it is uncontrollable. And you want to control the beast, the reverb beast. So he said, if you if you haven't got a soundproof studio, get in the wardrobe. <laughs> so I thought, Great. So I haven't really got a suitable wardrobe. But the thing is, I can't move the recording studio. That My equipment's too huge. I've got a massive Mac computer and a massive um, stand for the microphone. And, you know, to move that, because I thought I could do it in the four-poster bed. That would be really easy. Just shut all the curtains down. But then, you know, you've got the cat who just, the minute I start speaking, leaps all over the place, as you know, every morning. Um, anyway, there's, I was thinking about all these things and I, I thought, well, the wardrobe, I can't move the studio into a different space, put it that way. It's too difficult. I've got the preamp, I've got the huge mic, I've got a huge computer. I mean, I, I've got a laptop. I could set it all up. It would take me all bloody day. It would drive me insane. And then I'd be sitting in, in my wardrobe, to which is so stuffed with clothes. <laughs> so, um, so no, I thought, I'm not, I can't do that. I can't bring myself to do that. It's too, far too much work. So the next best thing I thought was build like a wigwam or a tent, you know, like I used to do for the kids in the studio, actually in the studio, because I've just carpeted it. So that's really good. And I've got all these huge velvet curtains. So I thought I could do that. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to be doing today. Building a, a, a nest near to the, record, the recording um, setup, right next to the piano, all very close at hand. And then I'm going to get in it and I'm going to do a podcast later from it. And we'll, we'll see if we can hear the difference. OK, I record this on my iPad. Now, I was, I was Googling as well, can I record broadcast standard audiobooks on an iPad? And basically, the, I couldn't find any details about that other than a guy who'd put a microphone into or he'd rigged it up with the iPad, but he had um, a special thing that he stuck in the sides, an adapter. I'm going to have to get one of those. Uh, I do love a little bit of tech, I must say. So it was an adapter he put in the, <coughs> excuse me, at the, in the um, mini, what is it? Let me look. What is it? It's a, just a little hole. You know, it's a, you know what I mean? A mini hole, firewire. C, is it a C firewire? Something like that. It's the small one. And he put it in there and then it gave him four more inputs. So he could put his flash drives in there and his mic. And he had this little mic. I have got a little mic that came with my Sony. <clears throat> oh, my frog in my throat. This is from all the bloody recording. I can't lose my voice today. Was it Lulu or somebody? I can't remember. Somebody says they don't sing or talk before midday. I thought maybe I should think about doing that. And it it saves their voices. I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Lady Gaga or maybe it was Dolly Parton. I don't know who it was. Um, anyway, my voice is always pretty shocking in the morning because I've, all I've had is coffee and also because of my medication for my migraines, it dries, it really dries me in the night. So by the evening, the medications have, have worn off and I don't take them till 8pm and then I've, I'm much more hydrated because I try not to drink coffee after five. I mean, I try, <laughs> I really try. So another tip there... Don't record first thing. You need to be really hydrated. Um, rest your voice. I mean, I really hope my vo vocal is going to be okay tonight I'm, and I'm not losing it. If so, I'll have to wait. But I'll, I'm going to build the tent. I can do a quick podcast from it. But I'm really feeling the 
um, the strain on my larynx. The other thing with my vocals on my all my um, new tracks, I open throat sing, and that's not sustainable. And because I've been recording for a new single with my open throat, because it takes me down a register or two, or oh, we know I don't know if that's the right terminology because you know it's all very new to me, but it 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 makes my vocal sound much nicer. So that's how I'm utilising. I've been doing that for a while, but anyway, digressing as usual. So I'm going to build the tent and see how I get on with that. I've also set up the microphone differently. The foam popper thing, I always have it too close to the mic, I've discovered. You need it halfway between you and the mic, otherwise it's not going to work. So that's another thing I've been doing wrong. And I've also put a wind protector on it just to, you know, of all angles covered, because I'm I'm so bored of this now. I'm so incredibly bored. The camera, the microphone should be six to ten inches away from your mouth. And if you, this is a really good tip, actually. If you hold your hand up in front of you and go, p -p -p -p, you can feel the little blasts of wind. It's amazing, isn't it? That's such a you don't think you're doing anything. It's only you're only talking, but the power behind your um, your puzz and buzz, ba 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 pa pa pa, absolutely amazing on the palm of my hand. Whereas if you move your face to the side, pa 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 pa, I mean you might be getting that now because I've turned my head. See what I mean? That's amazing, isn't it? Um, what else have I learned? I don't know. I mean, I I've been dirty editing. I would call it dirty editing. So I've had all these mistakes. And I've been putting them through the EQ to get... And I put noise gates on all the pers and the burbs, you know, and and that's lessened them so they're not as annoying. But it still didn't work completely. And it was so... I mean, I think there were... How many? 2,000 words, right? So if you think you 2,000 words and, and, what, one in five is popping? There's still a lot of work you you know to ret recover that audio and I think the other thing the big thing that I've learned this week is if it's shite do it again don't stop fiddling around with it you can do it again if you haven't lost your voice that is you can just do it again start you know learn change repeat do you see what I mean learn change repeat that's my new motto for for all sound engineers uh, well, no, they're gods, but this is for anyone who's got to do it themselves. I mean, in an ideal world, I would get another narrator to do my books anyway. Um, so f finally, just a word on, you know, your speech. I sound really stiff and I just turn into Joanna Lumley because of that. that's how I was taught to read at school. And I wanted to be much more relaxed and friendlier because... I don't want to alienate people when they start listening. Do you know what I mean? So I would say start listening. And that's too... You don't need to be like that. You Start listening. You see, my tea, my tea's not there. I start listening. And that's... Actually, what that does start... When you start... If you don't say the tea, you're not getting that start. Do you see what I mean? So it's actually harder... If you pronounce, if your enunciation is overly um, enunciated, it's harder to edit well. Oh. So I, I've, I guess I've covered everything. So I'm going to build my tent, and I'm also going to do a little recording on of the story on my iPad because I've downloaded an auto cue. It's a free auto cue. I can't remember what it's called. I'll let you know. And you basically. I mean, it's brilliant. It's genius. Absolute genius. So I'm going to try that, but I'm going to video myself doing it. I'll try and use the audio, see, if, see what the audio is like off my iPad and see if I can edit it and make it nice. You never know. Might be, might all be the solution I need for what I'm doing, which are internet videos. Um, and I'm also going to try and turn myself into a cartoon. So, yeah, well, busy day ahead. Catch you later, guys. I'll let you know about midnight uh, how frazzled I am. <laughs>